W-E-F-U-N-K. We funk. It is award season. Uh, it was just the Globes and the Grammys, but the big night, the big Oscars, right around the corner. And award season won- here in Coronaville, I guess, after a... Uh, it's been a long time here in Coronaville to finally start doling out some awards. But uh, a delayed Oscars this year finally announced. Yeah, because it's in April now. It's not it's usually in what, February? Yeah, usually in February, kind of like right after the Super Bowl this year, it's been announced to be April 25th. And uh, I guess they're running the Oscars season from like January 1st of 2020 all the way through February, I guess the end of February, February 28th of 2021. So an extended Oscar season. So anything that came out in February this year, I believe, is a potential for this year's Oscars. Just like a, you know, January release would have put you in for a normal Oscars, you know, or a December release would have put you in for a normal Oscars. But uh, Correct. so that's interesting. And I think they have waved off some of the, you know, movie release uh, uh, obviously, you know, the movie release runs have been waived mm-hmm. for movies to be, you know, considered for Oscars and all that kind of stuff with COVID. So uh, very interesting. And they have announced as well that they are going to be doing like a full on Oscars show here in Coronaville. Yeah, this yeah. is wild to me. <laughs> Which I guess like the Globes went virtual and people were doing their fucking acceptance speeches, you know, from uh, uh, their kitchen while cooking dinner and whatnot. But uh, yeah, the Globes uh, is hilarious because some people were dressed up and then some people like Jason Sudeikis is just sitting in a hoodie and yeah. rambling on for hours. <laughs> Even if you watch that, Don Cheadle was telling him to like wrap it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But this is going to be an official like everybody wearing gowns on site. Uh, uh, in Los Angeles, I think they're going to be using Union Station, which is like uh, uh, the big uh, rail terminal, you know, railroad terminal in Los Angeles as mm-hmm. like a housing area, staging area with performances and speeches being given on, you know, uh, uh, other sites, the Dolby Arena and other, you know, uh, local sites to the Union Station. So they're going to have everybody socially distanced as much as they can and trying to like go with uh, in adherence with California state law. But they're still making everybody dress up in gowns and fucking do a, do the whole bigger yeah, than well, life can... Oscars feel. So, dude, if I was the guy who like knew he wasn't going to win, like for instance, if I was anybody in the lead actor category, I was like, well, obviously Chadwick Boseman's gonna win. So again, I'm not going to this thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm, not getting COVID to... I'm not risking my life to put on a tuxedo I'm not and to lose to a dead guy. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, good call. I guess we can get into some of the Globes winners for uh, some of the, uh, of, you know, there's a spoiler alert for what's going to happen to the Oscars and Chad McBoseman uh, did win in the Globes. But I guess the other mm-hmm. big story for the Oscars, though, in general, first of all, well, Netflix the leading the he way. He did win for the Five Bloods. What's up? He didn't win for the Five Bloods. Who, Chad? Yeah, yeah, no, Chad McBoseman won from uh, Rainey's uh, Black Bottom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, uh, the Five Bloods, though, I was going to say, that's kind of the lead story for me with the Oscars, though, is the big snub, uh, the big snubinski for the Five Bloods. And Netflix still killed it, leading the way with uh, 35 noms and two Best Picture noms for Mank yeah. and Chicago 7. But the Five Bloods, nothing, pretty much like left totally off the Oscars uh, nomination list. Um, yeah, except they, for like uh, like a best sound or some bullshit yeah, like that. Best original score, the Five Blood. Okay, well, yeah, the best score. But I mean, uh, uh, what kind of bullshit is this? I mean, Delroy Lindy. I would say he's the real snub as well. Spike did a great Dude. job directing. The movie was great. There's only eight nominations for Best Picture as well, so they could have thrown this one in there, and nobody's even talking about it. That it was like, did uh, me and you gave it a fucking Rudy's dad? Did we just love this yeah, movie? Yeah. Like Dude, we thought it was for sure gonna be an Oscar nominee. Dude, how pissed off is Spike Lee by the? way he's like dude why did um uh, uh, uh ma Rainey's black bottom have to come out he's like i made a goddamn netflix movie too with chadwick boseman <laughs> yeah like, yeah I should be the one getting his words. <laughs> this is my... but I, and, but again like i was saying though uh, chadwick boseman was a little bit more of a supporting role in that one mm-hmm. and spike did a great job but i really felt we were we both i think really felt so that Del Roy Rolindo was really the Fucking no doubt yeah dude. man how did he not get uh, any acknowledgement man that was an amazing performance uh, carrying that movie really intense role you're telling me dude, that 100%. uh you know, uh, hundred uh, percent agree with you. But yet, some fucking movie like The Five Bloods didn't get a Best Picture, but some movie like The Father, starring Anthony Hopkins, that I've fucking never heard of, is up for Best Picture. You're like, get out of here! Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. 
You're telling me Anthony Hopkins was a fucking uh, uh, that much better than two popes. You're not gonna do it with the father. (laughs) I think another huge snub, dude. Best documentary, No Tiger King. What are we doing? Okay, nice, interesting. Well, I mean, wouldn't that be more? Is that an Emmy or an or an Oscar? Uh, It would be a series. Yeah, (laughs) yeah, yeah. yeah. But still, a documentary. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know for sure. But uh, I mean, hey, the Andre the Gi- the Andre the Giant documentary that came out on HBO. Uh, <laughs> nothing. The uh, uh, but uh, yeah, uh, I heard I haven't watched that, but I heard that it's amazing. No, it is Andre great. Yeah, for sure, it was fucking yeah, it was awesome. For uh, if you're a wrestling fan, but I think honestly, Andre the Giant story is even great if you're not a wrestling fan. Just as like yeah, a, I'm a Princess Bride so, fan. I want to know what's yeah. going on with that big dude. <laughs> Seriously. But uh, uh, I guess what uh, what were some of the other big stories uh, from the from the Oscars noms? I guess the uh, have you seen any of the? I'd say the other thing for me is none of the movies that were nominated. There's really no like big fun, you know, movies that I would have seen any, uh, otherwise kind of movies. Like no Once Upon a Time in Hollywood or The Irishman or even like a Bo Rap, which is at least like a. Yeah, there's uh, nothing fun on there, dude. Nothing I watched, fun. Uh, I- I did watch uh, Judas and the Black Messiah just because it was on HBO Max. Okay, that's an HBO Maxer. And that looks like it's great, but, uh, uh, you know. But here's something very weird about it. Like, you could say either one of them, Lakeith Stanfield or Daniel Kaluuya Kaluuya, uh, would be, like, the lead actor. They're both nominated for supporting actor. It was like, so what, that movie starred nobody? What <laughs> okay, interesting. What are you talking about? Very like, interesting. Even with Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, you know, Leo yeah, yeah, they the both got... actor, Brad Pitt was best supporting. Yeah, yeah, for there sure. You go. They both got their own categories, but... But and of course we'll break everything down on our Oscars uh, preview special, which will be coming up in just a couple of weeks at this point, you know, because the uh, yeah, Oscars, yeah. I guess, less than a, about a month away or so. I guess maybe to uh, you, I guess you want to just give out the best picture noms. Sure, because here we go. Like you were saying, a bunch of snoozers, man. Uh, we got. And I'm sure the they're fire. great films, and I'm going to enjoy them. You know what I mean? I'm not saying that they're going to be bad, but I'm just saying that there isn't one of those. There isn't. Uh, I'm just saying that there isn't one of those. You know, like a uh, real high budget. You know, marquee star, fun exactly. Hollywood kind of movies. You know, kind of like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Like that's You know exactly. For, the, like, uh, uh, no Country for stars. Old Men. Something like that. Yes, you know what I mean? Exactly. Like a uh, 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 no, like Tarantino or just no movie that that uh, uh, guys like me and you, the geeked up boys, would go in with like a huge rooting interest for. You know what I mean? Correct. I mean, Even if, like, the, the movie, Bill Murray uh, on the rocks was in there, I'd be like, all right, you got rid for Bill Murray. You know what I mean? Something like yeah. that. Like, this is a very uh, – a little bland. And, and, again, the movies might be great. I haven't seen too many of them. You'll run through them. I'll give you my – seen them, not seen well, them. But I'll tell you what. I guarantee I'm not watching The Father. I didn't watch <laughs> The Two Popes, and I'm not watching The only Father. reason I'll see The Father, potentially, which I won't. But I, I think did – I, did I read that the only theater in America that The Father is playing at is on Route 17 in Paramus, New Jersey? I don't know if I read that right. But, like, <laughs> I think the fucking theater in my hometown is somehow, like, the only theater in America during coronavirus that fucking released this hunk of shit movie with Anthony Hopkins playing a uh, Alzheimer – you know, victim, but I'm sure it's great. But again, I have no idea what it's about. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, no, Anthony Hobbs. Don't care to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But also, then uh, we got the Judas and the Black Messiah, uh, Mank, uh, which got fucking robbed of the Oscars. It was nominated, or at the Golden Globes, it was nominated for like six Globes. They're like the Buffalo Bills of uh, the movie world. They didn't <laughs> yeah. win one. Uh, Mank as um, well this year in the Oscars leading the way with 10 nominations. Yeah. Kind of yeah, a yeah. biopic starring Gary Oldman, who's, of course, great. Uh, David Gary Fincher Oldman. directed that. David Fincher's the director. Yeah. And his old man, David Fincher's dad, wrote the script before he died. Interesting. So that's kind of why, yeah. David wow, Fincher's I did like not know that. Too. That's cool. Um, and it's like an old um, Hollywood exec kind of biopic. I've heard great things. Yeah, it's about, um, what's the movie? Rosebud. Rosebud. Oh, yeah, yeah, Citizen Kane. It's about the making of Citizen Kane. Which, okay. believe it or not, dude, I'm loath to admit I've never seen Citizen Kane. Okay, it's literally supposed to be, like, the greatest movie to have ever come out. <laughs> it's like... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> God, a little yeah. overrated, I'd say. Once you, uh, no, I mean, I was like forced to watch that in a film class in college. Other than that, gotcha. I probably would have never seen it. But I wrote a paper on Rosebud once in my life. So I, like, <laughs> what was your Rosebud? <laughs> your stone cold action figure? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that was my thesis um, statement of the. Uh, I've got this stone cold figure that. <laughs> um, 
Let's say so. Get back to the pictures. Uh, Minari, which again is one I've never heard of. Uh, <laughs> Nomadland, Promising Young Woman, Sound of Metal, and Trial of Chicago Seven. Trial of Chicago Seven, another Netflix joint, another of Netflix course. Uh, I kind believe, of uh, main, uh, uh, most known for getting overshadowed by Borat, coming out back to back with Borat, uh, both starring Sasha Baron Cohen, and everybody <laughs> like rushed to the theaters to see Borat, and nobody watched uh, the Aaron Sorkin fucking uh, uh, docu drama about you know fucking uh, some court case in the seventies, but. You know that one obviously has a lot of uh, a lot of the the pictures this year. I feel have a lot of social relevancy to them. You know what I mean? Where uh, with all of the Me Too stuff, promising young women kind of well, has uh, some. I think <clears throat> Minari also upon a closer look. It's about a Korean family that starts a farm in 1980s Arkansas. Fucking give him the Oscar right now. <laughs> you know, I think that is a foreign film, though. Am I right about that one? I think that no, one no, is. No. They start a farm in Arkansas. That's as domestic as you get, baby. <laughs> okay, interesting. But uh, and then what else was there? Uh, Nomadland, Nomadland as well. That one's starring Francis McDormand, who I guess uh, me and you, I'd say, are probably pretty big fans of anyway. Yeah. Of so course. I could definitely see rooting for her. It looks like a really that one looks like it could be a theater kind of pick. Looks like it's got mm -hmm. some fucking like natural beauty and cinematography and lots of like landscape shots and stuff that could be, sure. you know, like a uh, really pretty to watch, pretty movie to watch from that standpoint. Uh, Riz so Ahmed is to watch Nomadland. Yeah, exactly. But I saw uh, 3D IMAX, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Francis McDormand. Plus, I want Francis McDormand to win just because the Oscars like fear her of all because she always like curses on stage or whatnot. Okay, the, nice. The beat, the beat guy is on like overtime with <laughs> I learned defense before. And that is what won in the Globes as we talked about getting in, getting into the Globes kind of Ooh. looking to that for usually a good spoiler alert for what happens uh, for the right. Oscars. Nomadland did win for best film. Uh, I guess uh, Sasha Baron Cohen did win for Borat or, or Borat itself won for best like cuz they do the comedy category as well in the globes the musical and uh -huh. comedy category so bora did get a globe although i don't think it's gonna i don't think he's gonna get anything for the uh i don't think he's gonna <laughs> yeah. get an oscar however but uh the but girl from wins. borat <laughs> as well though got snubbed well i don't want to say snubbed because uh, andrew day from billy Hall us versus billy holiday was great yeah. i did see that one but uh you would have liked the little romanian girl to fucking get her you know her official trophy for fucking Get, yes. For getting Giuliani to almost rape her on film, you know, like for no other reason, dude, the fucking the moon blood dance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> to only relive the, relive the moon dance. But, <laughs> but I'd say for me, that was kind of the biggest story from the Globes was that the Borat girl lost because uh, I don't even think is she nominated in the Oscars. I don't even think that she got like an sure. Oscar nom because well, they don't really like look at the comedies as serious, as serious, you know. But. Yeah, I'm not sure. I know Sasha Baron Cohen's nominated, but I don't think for – I think he's nominated for Best Supporting in Chicago, Chicago 7. 7. Yeah, which, yeah. If he wins, he better win his Borat. He better come <laughs> up there. And... <laughs> yes, he did a very good job in this movie about the seven Chicagos. I guess the other highlight, and just speaking of Nomadland too, is that the director also won Best Director for the Globes, uh, Chloe Zhao. Yeah, it's the first time an Asian woman has ever won uh, Best Director. At the okay, moment. definitely very socially relevant with everything that's happening with all the Asian violence in America mm -hmm. today. It would be great to see an Asian, you know, filmmaker yeah, be able the... to have the spotlight and give a Correct. speech in like a time like the... this. She's the first Asian woman to ever win it, and then she's also the second woman in general to ever win Best Director of the Globes. You know who the first was? A Barbara Streisand. Interesting. What did yeah. Barbara Streisand direct? Beaches? What's what was the her? fucking movie where she uh, dresses as a boy? Like, <laughs> I don't know, me? dude. I'm, I'm out on any Barbara. I, I would lose in any one of Jordan's uh, Barbara Streisand trivia contests. <laughs> I'm fucking coming up dead last. I got to be honest. But, it's uh, one of those names, though, dude. You would know it 100%. Yeah, no, for sure. I'm sure, Sein, I'm sure that the Seinfeld episode yeah, spoofed it. Which one? Yentl. Yentl. Okay. He did, was, Seinfeld always talked about Yentl. That was like <laughs> that was a fucking running gag in Seinfeld. But uh, <laughs> hilarious. But uh, uh, like I said, uh, between and as well, Minari for the same kind of uh, you know Asian love sentiment. There's just a lot of movies. A lot of the categories are going to have like heartwarming opportunities for acceptance speeches. 
However, a lot of the big, you know, a lot of our favorite Hollywood mainstays on the outside mm. looking in for the Oscars this year, I'd say. Yeah, we got to figure so many people, like, did it and pushed production back and didn't make movies this year. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it really was a... like the. 2022 Oscars are going to be off the fucking chain. No, man, that's a very good call, too. In, in, uh, uh, just in thoughts of the Cronaville Oscars, a lot of the major motion picture, major high-budget movies did get pushed back and production did get delayed for a lot of releases and everything, and I feel like that is definitely, at least for me, why coming into it I've only seen, you know, like two out of the eight nominated movies for uh, best picture you know a lot of the just major major motion pictures didn't get released but then a couple other ones like uh, both of the tom hanks major releases didn't get any love greyhound and as well news of the world as well pretty much left off um the bill murray like so Sophie, Sophia coppola bombs though That's yeah same Both thing with the On the Rocks, Bill Murray, Sophia Coppola. So yeah, I guess yeah, there yeah. were some other, you know, Tenant was, did get released but kind of fell flat. So, I mean, a lot of the big mo- motion pictures that did get released didn't have, you know, uh, didn't have the splash that they thought they might anyway, you know. Hamilton, I found it. Uh, Lin-Manuel Miranda didn't get any nominations for Hamilton, which he was nominated for a Globe for, you know, musical comedy performance. But I wouldn't have been surprised. Uh, and I'm sure Hamilton actually probably is like a best song nomination, you know. But I'm, so I'm sure Lin-Manuel will have some Oscars thing. But Hamilton didn't get any major love. That was a huge release over the last yeah, save year. it for the Tonys. Yeah, no, great call. But, uh... You know, in general, it's a little, it's a different Oscars here, obviously celebrating the movies coming out here in Coronaville, but, uh, so very much looking forward to that, but also very much looking forward to get into next year's Oscars with, uh, Tarantino and, uh... Yeah, Tarantino Star Trek. Did it (laughs) say dead Klingons on my door? (laughs) Uh, joke never gets old. But I would say, too, speaking of, like, musical performances, like Hamilton and whatnot, uh, there was this one story I want to cover from the Grammys, and that, of course, is Cardi B and Megan Thee Stallion whopping on stage. <laughs> yeah, whopping it up. I need a whopper after that performance. That was... Uh... To me, dude, it's just so funny, just, like, how blown away and offended and frightened, like, the right-wing conservative... Because it happened at the same time. This is something I keep seeing online. It happened, the Grammys happened around the same time that, like, Dr. Seuss, quote-unquote, was canceled, right? Okay, I see. So then the big right-wing argument was like, so, cat in the hat's not okay, but these women can have simulated sex on stage. It's like, <laughs> what are you fucking talking about, dude? Like, what a comparison. I mean, I kind of see where they're coming from. There's a little bit of a double standard. Like, if you're going to go crazy about the, uh, you know, uh, uh, what the Dr. Seuss book would do to the kids, you know, it's not a good, uh, not a good, not, Dr. Seuss not a good example to the kids to have the, you know, Cardi B whopping it up all over the stage. You Dr. Know what Seuss I mean? fucking. And I'm not. I think the Dr. Seuss thing company is ridiculous, but... stopped making five books that nobody ever heard of because yeah, yeah, no, but racist sure, but... fucking Asian. But what do you think? It just take Dr. Seuss it. aside. What do you think about the Cardi B performance? Was it? Uh... What the fuck, dude? I was around for fucking my neck, my back, my pussy, and my crack. Like, dude, <laughs> it's fucking what music is. Sorry, old people that don't get it. Like, it's not for me, but. Yeah, who the fuck? Like, Miley Cyrus was twerking her little 18-year-old ass at MTV Movie <laughs> Awards. Who gives a fuck? Don't watch it. Yeah, you know, yeah, don't yeah, let your sure. shitty fucking junior Nazi kids fucking listen to it, then. Like, fucking yeah. who gives I a I mean, shit? I think Cardi B is definitely... Uh, uh, I do agree with her. It's not her responsibility to be anybody's yeah. parent or role model or anything like that. And it's definitely CBS's mistake for getting Cardi B up there to do the wet ass pussy dance on national TV and then complaining that it's like, wow, did some lines get crossed here? <laughs> it's like she's doing the wet ass pussy wrong. dance. So, yeah. But dude, you so. have to because you have to let her do it. It's like the fucking number one song. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, sorry. Like, it's what it is. You can't fucking not play it because <laughs> yeah, you yeah, don't sure. like it. Fuck, get out of here. <laughs> fucking listen it all started when they let out, Elvis dude. wiggle his speaking hips of, on TV, you know? It all went downhill yeah, from there. Speaking of, like, Biggie, the Biggie movie, listen to a Little Kim album from the 90s. Fucking, she makes Cardi B sound like Celine Dion, dude. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. But uh, in general, they probably shouldn't have put it on the uh, on the Grammys, but... I'd say definitely not Cardi B's. But you kind of have to, though. Like I said, like all the number one songs perform on the Grammys. 
You know what I mean? She has the number one song in America. You have to let her perform it, dude. Now, you don't have to. Been like, <laughs> you know, like, sure. But it, you definitely do. You don't even have, have to let it be nominated. The Grammys get to, get to do their own fucking nominations. It's not like a people vote. You know, it's like the Grammys, I'm sure, have some voting committee. If you don't fucking approve of the content, then fucking don't put it up to, to be voted on. You know what I mean? It's like. Don't fucking yeah. don't, don't celebrate the song. Like you're the ones that are celebrating the song by making it fucking one of the best songs. You know what I mean? Like this is your decision, <laughs> Grammys. You know what I mean? This isn't the fucking sure, this isn't sure. the uh, democratic vote that all fucking got together and nominated it the best <laughs> song. The fucking Grammys did, and then they fucking let her nah, perform. Man, it's a takeover, baby. And they we fucking, demanded it. <laughs> yeah, we want our Cardi B, dog. <laughs> But I mean, fucking uh, 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 like you said, Lil Kim never got nominated. Where was her nomination? You know what I mean? Yeah. But no, I'm saying because dude, you think like I'm saying, you think Cardi B's bad. You fucking Lil Kim ain't getting radio play, dude. There's no uh, you can't call because I heard the Cardi B's on the radio and they call it, which is, it sounds even grosser. <laughs> they call it wet and gushy on the uh, <laughs> the radio. Okay, wow. Well. I was like, wet and gushy. It's like it's fucking disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> just at that point, just say it. Well, what about Little John? Was that on the radio? To the window, to the wall. <laughs> What's up? All skeet skeet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, what did, was that like a radio cut or was that the club cut? I forget. I was I was young and cool yeah. when that came out, so I fucking forget. But well, I think too. Like, I don't think anyone knew what skeet meant at the time, so they could play it on the radio. There's that Chappelle sketch. It's yeah, like, yeah, for sure. But I think radio. isn't that kind of with what the the whopping controversy? Weren't they claiming that they didn't know that like what it stood for since it's an acronym and all? Oh, uh, <laughs> you're a fucking. If, if that's what the Grammys are saying, dude. And you're a fucking <laughs> idiot, dude. Right. I think that was like, that's yeah, that amazing. was. Uh, some people's take that. Song like, about wasps. Yeah, like when they were like that, like that's where people like when it became the number one song. They were like, "Well, I had never, I could not imagine what the song was about when we made it the number one it song." A, yeah, I thought it was a Burger King. Song. I mean, isn't I that like Robert. Despacito? Doesn't Despacito mean like, you know? Uh, I think oh. I think it like literally translates to like "fuck me slowly" or something like that, like "make love slowly." <laughs> but I think it has like a pretty sexually graphic in you know. By nature, translation that well, Americans totally with, decided uh, to ignore. The fucking Lady Marmalade song. I think like they're saying a bunch of dirty shit in like, okay, French during that song. Like, <laughs> okay. I think that is like. You know, well, everybody knows, everybody knows that French people. Everybody knows that French chicks are whores. So that's no. <laughs> that's no surprise. Cancel, dog. Cancel that. <laughs> I mean, next thing you tell me, Khaleesi's milkshake is going to uh, not be a delicious beverage, you know? I mean, what do we... <laughs> <laughs> You're telling me that's her pussy that she's talking about? I don't well, think so. But anyway, if you want to ca- check me, check the Facebook for a video of me and Devin whopping it up. <laughs> the Geeked Up <laughs> style. Uh, some Geeked Up style whopping. Big F! W-E-F-U-N-K. We funk. <laughs>